Hello artists and welcome back to my six part series on colour theory. So this is episode two and in episode two we're going to be looking at values. We're going to be creating our own value chart and we're going to be painting this picture. Don't worry if this seems too daunting, it's really not. I'm going to take you through the process step by step and I just want you to enjoy it and to let your mind be at ease and really enjoy the process of just playing with some paints and mixing these colours. So a value, what is a value? Well, a value is just the lights and the darks that we have in our paintings. And I'm going to show you how you can create your values using black and white, red, blue and yellow. Now you can use any three colours you like. I've just gone for the three primary colours and let's get going. Okay, so we're going to do this value chart together now. Um, I've just got myself a cup of tea. Make sure you get yourself a nice hot drink. And let's get going. So this is a brilliant exercise to do before we do our painting because we're going to really understand how we're creating our low values and how we're, we are creating our high values. And it's great to have as a reference as well. So let's get going. The very first one we want to do is just going to be black and white. It's going to be no colour. So we're going to go for this top box here. So let's create our values. So first of all, we just want to fill in the black and the white. And whilst you've got your black paint with your paintbrush, you might want to just fill in all the boxes black and then rinse your brush off and fill in all these boxes white because we're... So now it's time to create our first value chart. Um, this one's going to be black to white. So what we want to do is grab a big scoop of black paint. It's like the size of a pea that I've gone for there. And then I'm going to give my palette knife a wipe. And then I'm just going to add half the amount of white that, I'm, uh, that I did black. And give that a mix. So this is going to create a nice low value for us. It's not much white in there. It's still quite dark. And once you're happy with your mixture, this is the easiest way I find to do this, is just to take a scoop of your mixture and place it here. Give your palette knife or paintbrush a good clean and then go back in with some white. Again, it's just a bead of white. I'm going in with exactly the same amount of white. I'm gonna give that a mix. And again, when you're happy with that, we're gonna repeat that same process and wipe out palette knife. And I'm always amount adding the same amount of white to my mixture. And that's just going to give me a nice gradient. I'm not going to see a, too much of a dramatic shift with it because I'm just going in with the same amount of white paint. Okay, so now we've created some beautiful low values. They're very dark and now we want to create some high values. So with the high values, as it gradually goes, they're going to be getting lighter and lighter. Again, the same amount of white paint. A good way to really see high and low values on a photograph or is to just turn it black and white and you'll see all the where all these values sit and it just eases the mind a little bit when it comes to painting it you know how much white or how much black you might want to add Perfect. And I'm just going to go for one more. See how light these are? They're almost white. And again, the same amount of paint. And there we've got a really nice journey of values. So we want to paint them in as they are laid out here onto the chart. So we're going to go from dark to light. And you want to make sure that you are rinsing your brush out each time because you really don't want to contaminate that paint you mixed because it will interfere with the value that we've created. I'll give my brush a really good rinse. Make sure you've got some kitchen roll handy. Give it a good dab. And then I'm going to pick up my next value. 
and they are so many different varieties of values you could go you could go a bit darker with this one and carry you could do hundreds of them um i just did this many to keep it simple for us but there are many in between so you can always have a play around especially when it comes to your paintings you'll have hundreds of values in there okay lovely brush your rinse then we're on to our uh, high values now. Oh, my brush was a little bit... See, I made the mistake of <laughs> not rinsing my brush properly and look what happens. So I'm just going to add a touch of white to that because I don't want that to look darker. <laughs> just add a touch more white to that so we can get that true value. Lovely. Yeah, so you want to make sure when you do rinse your brush, you're giving it a really good dry off. And then finally, you have this one. Perfect. Give your brush a really good rinse and give it a dry and feel free to change your water at this point. So now we've got these values. We want to write on our what they are. So we want to write on here that these are our low values, these are our darks. And then here, we've got our high values. These are really light values. These are values you might use for mountains in the distance or where this nice bright light is hitting um, a surface. Okay, shall we do some colour values? So this is a little bit different to doing the black and the white. We're actually going to put the straight colour here um, in this box, the fourth box including the from the black, including the black. So one, two, three, four, just where I've wrote colour, hue. So I've wrote hue because hue is just another term that artists use for colour. Um, so that's a little bit of knowledge that if you see hue, you might want to know what does hue mean? Now you know. So let's go. We're going to get some red. Now these bottles are brilliant, but they do square out like tomato ketchup. <laughs> so we're going to fill out our red first of all, just under where I've titled the colour. And you can use any colour paint you like for this. I'm just going to go with the three primaries because I know they're the basic colours that everyone might have. We're now going to create our light values of our, our red. So when we're creating our light values, we do not want to add black. If we add black to our light value, it's going to create a grey. So what we want to do is we want to make sure it's just going to be white and red. So let's get going with that. So we're just going to take a scoop of red. And we're going to pop that down there. I'm going to go in with a nice big bead of white paint there. It's definitely more white than red. So let's mix that one up. And there's no right or wrong how much white you add. As long as it gradually gets lighter, then you're on the right track. You're creating your different high values. Lovely. And exactly the same with what we did with the black and the white. I'm just going to take a scoop and pop that there to add another bead of white. Again, it's going to be the same amount of white paint. It's a big bead and I'm going to mix that in. Because we're putting the colour in the middle, I want to see that dramatic shift. We've only got three to play around with, so I want to make sure that you can really see that it does go lighter. Now we've got them, we can certainly fill them in or you can wait until you've done your low values. So I'm going to actually do my low values now and then I'll fill them in after. 
if you want to take your time and you don't want your paint to dry then please do get filling them in so i'm going to take a bead of red paint wipe my palette knife and with the black i'm not going to add that much black i'm going to add a really small amount of black paint because the black paint really does take over um, a color so we just want to add a little bit and you see how dark that already is and give that a nice mix now if you mix it and you think oh it's way too dark don't worry you can go in and add some more red so i'm going to take a scoop of that to one side and i'm going to add the tiniest touch of black to this so i've barely even touched my palette knife with that black paint there i'm going to mix that in just so we see a difference So it's now time to move on to our blue paint and we're going to repeat the exact same process. So there we have it we have our value charts this is just really good exercise to get to grips with how to create our high values and our low values but now it's time to do a painting with our values so let's go hi everyone so this is part two of episode two where we're going to paint using our values so i'm going to paint using a black and a white you can add one color if you like um just like we did on the value chart or you can just paint in black and white. So I'm gonna use this photograph today, I'll, but you don't have to paint this, you can paint anything you like. Just all you need to do is turn it black and white with a filter on your phone to really understand where them values sit. So let's go ahead. So first of all, I like to do the background first. So before I part, start blocking anything in, I want to create this beautiful blend in the background. And if you look, this is quite a low value. So if I get my value chart, you can certainly see that this value here definitely sits somewhere here. And then the gradient goes down to a value, a low value that probably sits here and then it goes down even more so. And then here is a ridiculously high value. So it's probably going to sit somewhere in between, somewhere around here on the value chart. So I'm going to mix a few low values, probably two to keep it simple, and a nice light value. So I'm going to mix three values though together to begin with for my background. We're going to mix a low value and then we're going to make it a bit lighter and then we're going to mix a high value. So let's get mixing them three colours first. So I'm going to start off with the low value, the lowest value. So I'm just going to take some black and wipe down that palette knife and I'm going to add some white to it and less is really more we can add more white it's much easier to add more white so let's just do a little bit at a time and see where that sits now for me this already looks quite dark and way too dark for sitting there so I'm going to add a bit more white to this and you want to make sure that you are rinsing your brush or wiping your palette down, knife down in between each take. Okay. So that's already looking better. And it doesn't need to be exact to the photo for reference. You just want an idea. The idea is there. As long as it sits somewhere, as close as you can get it, to the value that sits there so if you can see that's pretty close so i'm happy with that and i'm going to move on to this second value here along here where it's just a bit lighter so i'm just going to take a scoop of my mixture to save me mixing another mixture up from scratch it's just going to save that bit of time 
and playing around and I'm just going to go in with some white and give that a mix and see what happens. I do try to judge how much of each black and white I'm putting in. And you sort of get a good idea when you have been mixing colour for a while but at first it can be, it, it's really fun to just try with it but it can be a bit challenging but that's how we learn, we learn by doing. So here I'm quite happy with that value and now I want to create my high value. Now this value is really high, I'm just creating three values to keep it simple but you can create as many as you like. So I'm going to keep all my high values on this side, and my dark and low values on this side. So this value is very light and so what I'm going to do, rather than add a bit of black, I'm going to add a little touch of the value that we've just created there. that mixture we can start creating our beautiful blend on our background. So I've actually got this flat brush which I'm going to use. I'm going to actually wet my canvas down a little bit. Now acrylic paint works great wet on wet, it really does flow and when we are blending we need to be pretty fast because the paint dries so quick so the water really does help it <laughs> help it um, blend across the paper a lot better. Lovely. So now that's wet, I'm not going to be too pushed for time. So it just get, releases that pressure a little bit more. So I've got quite a heavy wet brush there. I'm not going to dab it. I'm going to take this sh uh, low value here and give that a good mix with the water. So I'm going to prop my picture up. I'm going to start blending this dark colour in and then I will immediately go to this colour, to this low value here and I'll start blending that in and then I'll, re I'll move on to the high value. So let's go with that. So with the mountains, they are, you can see them, they're obviously not as high value as the background, but they are still pretty high value, they're not really sitting in the low values, they're actually somewhere in the middle, the tops of the mountains for sure. So what we're going to do, we're going to paint in all these background mountains, and we're not going to worry about this yet, because we can paint over this. Get going in with mixing some values for the mountains. So they are quite high value, so I'm going to take some white paint and we're just going to add, and again I'm going to use this we've already used and give that a mix and see what we get. And you can keep matching it up to your painting to see where it sits. Now I'd say that's too light, 
but you can see as the mountains go down they do get a bit lighter but again it's still too light so I'm going to add a bit more of that low value little bit darker it's always better to add a little bit at a time lovely so I'm quite happy with that so what I'm going to do I'm going to paint in all this dark and create these shapes of the mountains and then I'm going to go in with my higher values even higher than this to and start bringing that down because you see how they fade in the background there and what the one here is really light so we might just end up painting over that completely but we want to get in them shapes we want to get the idea down and this is called blocking in when we're putting something down on the canvas that we're going to work on i'm just going to take this filbert brush here give it a bit of a dab of some water trees so I'm just gonna block in where the trees are gonna go and I'm gonna just do this with a straight black because I can paint on top of it so we're fine so I'm gonna get my black I'm gonna add a bit of water to it so it's a bit more of a runny consistency and I'm just gonna start putting in them shapes of the trees and where they're gonna be and build on that So now we've got some nice shapes. Let's build on these shapes and make them look like trees. So I'm going to do a, a brush technique called stippling. And I find this is the best brush technique for doing anything like trees. So you can take a flat brush and you can use the very tip of the brush. It doesn't have to be the flat brush. Uh, you can use any shape brush as long as you use a tip. Like this might be quite a nice one. As long as I've got a bit of something there. I find the flat brush is quite handy to use. Let's see if I've got a dry one. So yeah, I'm just going to use this beaten up old old brush here. So it's just got a bit uh, of bristleage going on, if that's even a word. So we're going to start with the darkest values first. Now nothing on this page is actually black. So I want to initially establish the darkest bits going to take this black that I created and I'm just going to add some of my white to it just to lighten it a touch. don't want it too light because it is almost black. And I'm going to start going in with that first. And you'll really start to see this come to life. I'm going to wet my brush a bit the excesses so it's got a bit more flexibility to it and you just want to tap your brush directly onto the canvas 
see that. <laughs> and then we're just going to tap away and create that nice texture where the trees will sit. I can only apologise that uh, my storage got full when I was filming, so unfortunately I didn't realise it had stopped. But what I've been doing is blending in where all these values sit between the trees on the water. So we're just merging the picture together now. We're not making it look like this is this half and that is that half. We're merging it together. Um, so I'm just about to pop in some more lights here, just where we see them on the photograph. It's very light here. We're gonna go. Now I have got some um, grey in this white, so it's not it's not just a pure white. saying if your paint is still wet it's quite nice for the water because you're going to be blending in uh, merging the two together so it's quite nice that it smoothly blends brush and this paint should still be wet at this point if not don't worry about this step I'm just gonna blur out some of these trees a little bit because the water's moving so is the reflection just add more so it's a bit like an ink more water it'll be easier to draw with and don't worry about making these perfect we just want the initial shape in. so the tops and the little sticks we've got a little man somewhere there it's quite nice and then this boat is quite in the center isn't he and sort of goes up into like a triangle, two triangles together, I'd say, like that. So just conjoin the two. Nice little roof. 
and some little bits there. Like I say, see it in shapes. Nice, and then I can go on top of that with even lighter. Start bringing that to life. This is the last stage, so really don't worry about mixing or contaminating your paint at this point. So I'm happy with this, it's a nice test for our values where we see everything sit and you'll just start seeing things more, you'll start seeing more values and when you are doing a painting you'll know where you want your colours lighter and darker and it's really just going to bring that photograph to life. I'm going to stop. I'm <laughs> happy with that. So I hope you enjoyed this exercise. This is what I created. I hope that was easy to follow. 